Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to talk about poly logarithms. We're going to start with a definition and then we're going to look at some particular poly logarithms and finally we're going to look at some properties. Let's start with a definition. So the poly logarithm of order s where s is a complex number denoted as li sub s is defined by a power series. So we have the definition Li sub S at Z equals the sum as N goes from 1 to infinity of Z to the N divided by N to the S. Now we want to know when the series is convergent. Using the ratio test, we're going to see that the series convergent is convergent for the modulus of z less than 1. So it's, it's going to be convergent inside the open disk centered at 0 with radius 1. Okay, now let's look at some other definition. But before we do, uh, let me just say that among all the polylogarithms, only two of them have names. Uh, so we have the dialogarithm, which corresponds to s equals 2, and the trilogarithm, which corresponds to s equals 3. Now, if we differentiate li sub s at z, we're going to get z to the negative 1 times the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of z to the n divided by n to the s minus 1. Now, this sum can be written as li sub s minus 1 evaluated at z. So we have this nice relationship. Now, we can also see that li sub s at 0 is always equal to 0 because we have a power series and there is no constant term in our power series. So li sub s at, at 0 is equal to 0. So using these two identities we deduce by integration that li sub s at z is equal to the integral from 0 to s of li sub s minus 1 at t divided by t dt. Now let's look at some particular poly logarithms. So let's look at the poly logarithm of order 0. So li sub 0 at z is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of z to the n. This is a geometric series. We can simply write it uh, as z times the sum as n goes from uh, 1 to infinity of z to the n minus 1, or if you want, as z times the sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of z to the k, so, the sum of, of a series is going to be simply z divided by 1 minus z. And this is defined everywhere on the complex plane except at z equal 1. So, we can basically extend our polylogarithm of order, z, of order 0 on the complex plane without uh, z equal 1. Next, we want to look at the polylogarithm of order negative 1. This can be defined as z times the derivative of li sub 0 evaluated at z. Now, we know that li sub 0 at z is equal to z divided by 1 minus z. As we differentiate and multiply by z, we end up with z divided by 1 minus z squared. Okay, and this is also defined on the complex plane without uh, the point z equal 1. Next, we have li sub 1 at z. This is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity 
of z to the n divided by n, and this is simply negative log evaluated at 1 minus z. Now let's look at some properties. But before we do, let's just express Li sub 2 in terms of uh, the logarithms. Okay, so Li sub 2 at z is equal to the integral from 0 to z of Li sub 1 at t divided by t dt. And we just saw that Li sub 1 at t is equal to negative log of 1 minus t. So this is equal to negative the integral from 0 to z of log of 1 minus t over t dt. Now let's move on to some properties. Now first we're going to compute the sum Li sub s at z plus Li sub s at negative z. This by definition is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of z to the n plus negative z to the n divided by n to the s. We can factor z to the n, and we get the sum as n goes from 1, from 1 to infinity of 1 plus negative 1 to the n divided by n to the s times z to the n. Okay, 1 plus negative 1 to the n is either 2 or 0. It's going to be 2 when n is even and 0 when n is odd. So we're just going to have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 over 2n to the s times z to the 2n. Let's factor 2 and 2 to the s and then write z to the 2n as z squared to the n. And we have finally 2 to the 1 minus s times li sub s at z squared. Okay, now let's look at li sub s at 1. By definition, this is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. And this is precisely the Riemann zeta function evaluated at s. Okay, and of course, this is going to be convergent as long as the real part of s is greater than 1. Next, we want to look at Li sub s at negative 1. Using uh, the previous relationship, this is equal to 2 to the 1 minus s times Li sub s at 1 minus Li sub s at 1. And after factoring and replacing Li sub s at 1 by uh, z at s, we get 2 to the 1 minus s minus 1 times zeta at s. And this is a good place to, th to stop. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.